know this is faint. It's a little brighter under your scope. Here's one duct, two duct, three duct. One, two, three. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better. Part of my problem is the camera's responsiveness. And I'm going to go up in power. I'm on scanning. Here's another place. One, two, three. And we've got dirt somewhere. One, two, three. Over here. One, two, three. So let me take you up to a good cross section to low power. And we'll make sense of this. So this is not a bad place. I've cleaned everything. I have no idea where those spots are or internal. Okay. Man, that's horrible. I will try to have this worked on before our exam. Mm. Now, can you see the simple squamous epithelium membrane? We're only at low power. I could go to high. So that's the vestibular membrane, okay? So superior to it is the vestibular duct. Vestibular duct, vestibular membrane. Here's the organ of corti. So the cells here are either sensory, they're either hair cells or they're support cells, and I'm not making you differentiate. So if I point to this and say name the cell type, I think you have to name hair cells, yeah? Name the structure, organ of corti. And here is the tectorial membrane. And it's still pretty stretched out in this particular cross section. So, what duct are we in here? The cochlear duct. Okay. Yes? Can you repeat that last thing that you said, not the, um, the, mem the membrane before? Tectorial membrane? Tectorial membrane. Tectorial membrane is the one. Because tector comes from touching, it touches the hair cells. So organ of corti made up of hair cells, tectorial membrane stretching out towards those hair cells, often retracted on our slides. Cochlear duct is the space filled with fluid here. And then, I don't think I have basilar membrane anymore for you. So then the duct on the inferior side of the organ of corti is the tympanic duct, okay, named for the tympanic membrane. Can you repeat the first membrane? Yes, yeah. I'm going to go over it again. Vestibular duct, vestibular membrane, cochlear duct, organ of corti, touched by the tectorial membrane. Tympanic duct. Yes. Are they always going to be arranged in that manner? Like uh huh. Vestibular. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you okay. another one. So I mean, you have to find the group of them, but you always look for one, two, three, yes. and you always look for that simple squamous epithelium, and you look for the organ of corti and the tectorial membrane. They are not always going to that side. I can go over to the other side and show you coming out in this direction. Here's the organ of corti <coughs> with sensory, I mean hair cells. Here's the tectorial membrane, which is pretty much intact in place. Here's the vestibular membrane. Okay, so it's really repetitive the size of the ducts can change. Here it's bigger. Tympanic duct, cochlear duct, vestibular duct. Okay? Everybody comfortable with that? So clearly you have to memorize the anatomy, but then the interpretation should be quite straightforward. Okay, I'm sorry I'm taking up so much of your time. I do hope it's helpful. So I'll give you the quick orientation on the eye and then we'll move into lab. 
we are looking at the back of the eye right now. So we're actually looking at a section through the eyeball at the back. The surface here is where light rays come in. So our cornea is way over here by the door, okay, and our lens, and the light rays are coming through the posterior cavity filled with vitreous humor, and they're impinging on the retina right here, right where that white um, arrow is. So the retina has three cell layers. We have the biggest cell layer and the deepest cell layer, and these are the nuclei of the cells, these are the photoreceptors back here. So this is the rods and cones layer. And we have the most number of rods and cones of any of the cells in the retina. <coughs> you need to understand something. This is not evolutionarily, uh, this would not be an en a well-engineered solution to picking up light cues. If I were engineering this, if any engineer were engineering this, the light-sensitive receptors would be right at the front of the retina. They're not. They're buried at the back edge of the retina. The retina ends right here. So the light has to come through one cell layer, through the synapses with the second cell layer, through synapses with the third cell layer, it has to filter between the nuclei and stimulate the back side of the rods and cones. So it's a really funny system, but look around, you know. It works really well when things are working normally. So this is the rods and cones layer. This is the bipolar cell layer. So those are bipolar neurons. This is those are only found in sense, major sensory organs. And then this is the ganglion cell layer. So these are, this is a layer, an individual, um, a single cell layer of ganglion. They're called ganglion cells. And what I'm pointing to are the nuclei of ganglion cells, bipolar cells, rods and cones were not differentiated. Okay? And then the last part of the retina is this pigmented layer. Now that pigment is the same as the pigment back here in the choroid. Here's a blood vessel. So the choroid is part of the middle vascular tunic and these are blood vessels in that vascular tunic supplying the eye with blood, okay? So the choroid is a lot thicker with the brown pigment than this pigmented layer of the retina right here. And then posterior to that, the fibrous connective tissue is the sclera.